Today I'm going to show you how to completely strip down an Instax Y300 camera so that you can customize it similarly to this one right here. This one has a uh, Polaroid 600 mount uh, that'll clip on to where this ring currently sits and there's a Polaroid 600 SE lens on there. Um, I started with a Mamiya Press version so I have that as well. Um, I'll put links to both of them below. I mean, there are some things that you need to keep track of. The screws they are actually, they're all the same threading. There are a few that are longer than others, and I'll try to point out where those go. Uh, the rule of thumb is anything that has a rounded head goes on the exterior. It's completely visible at all times. And anything that's a completely flat head um, is going to be internally or inside the battery compartment. And if you open yours up, you could probably see um, that they're flatter than the rest of them. So we'll put that to the side there. I start off with removing all the uh, colored parts, the silver parts. I already removed the uh, screw here, but this usually is one of the long ones. Um, but if it's not, don't worry. And I had already removed that there. So you want to slowly and gently pry this up because there's double stick tape under here. All right, so you don't want to break this. Now see, this is one of the long ones that I was telling you about. And these two, if this one's the right, yeah, that's a long one. So that's usually what you'll find is these two are the longest ones. And then sometimes the one that goes over here on the silver part. Everything else is the same length. Then there's another two up here that you remove. And then once you remove those two, you can slowly pop that. Um, right off where the uh, camera strap attaches to so you want to remove that battery compartment that's why I love that magnet right, now we start taking it apart in pieces you can probably remove it from the back you lift it like so but and I like pressing my thumb down there to help push up from this way and you'll have something come along with it like that so we are retrofitting this camera so we don't need any electronics except for the motor and the switch to be in place so we're just going to start ripping stuff off right, and we'll get back to that one in a moment all right now what were we going to do batteries out okay so now this part, we got to remove this ring here, and the way you do that is you press it down, you squeeze it, so you can just, uh, sorry, I have to put that up against my chest, pry it off, pry that sucker off, you don't need it, but usually you want to twist it as far clockwise as you can go. And then pull it out. That way the tabs are like right in the channels. There's these little channels there. Where are they at? Oh. If you can see that. Right in there. That this ring attaches to. And that's where my mount goes. Alright, what else do we do here? Um, now we need to release it from... So you just see what I did there? I grab the bottom and I press the lens and I just pop up. Right, and now that comes off. So now that is that. And let's remove some electronics. So remember I told you um, the only thing that we need now if we're going to hack this camera is this board over here and the motor. So there's a screw up here. There's one over here. Alright, we could leave all those wires there for now, except this purple-yellow. This is another switch that you might want to keep. Just pull it outward. Alright, so now let's remove this whole lens cone. That's what I'm going to call it. 
inner shroud, inner cone. I've got no manual. So I don't know what that's called. Let's see, there's another two down here. Remove this screw here. And you do not need any of the gears in here anymore. Um, so. Just feel free to. Oh, you know what? I did forget a screw. Yeah, that wasn't popping off easily. I think there was one more switch. Yeah, there was. Over on this side, that's the door switch in the back. You don't need that anymore. It doesn't do anything because we ripped the electronics out. But that is also a cool little contact switch that you can use. We have um, the Instax wide back panel, which you should keep uh, facing up with the door down at all times because there's two buttons there that kind of get annoying to have to put them back in. But if you do screw that up, it's okay. I mean, the flash goes first and the tab faces this way and then the light dark goes that way. You could replace that with blank buttons. You're not going to use those buttons anymore. So. No big deal, but make sure you put them back in before you reassemble the camera. There's also the this plate that you got to keep too. Um, it has the L the original L back LCD and then the the flash and light dark buttons. So that goes back on of this before you put it all back together, and we'll go over that later. You'll have your front face fascia of the camera. And then you have the processing unit, and then I've undone all the wires so I could point out which wires you need. Okay, and then you have the other colored parts in the battery door. So the way I wire it, uh, and how I figured it out to wire the motor straight is probably not the best way. Um, I am not very good at electronics, I'm good at connecting something to a battery, <laughs> and that's about it. Um, so some of you might have a better idea or suggestions or a way to keep it so that um, when you press the button um, it goes through the whole ejection cycle automatically. Um, the way I'm doing it right now is you have to hold down the button and then it'll eject it, um, the frame. You have to hold it down for like five seconds until Put it rest of that down until it um, pops the film out. All right, so uh, what I'm gonna do first is remove. There's this switch on here that shorts out when it gets activated. It's the original on-off switch. Um, so since the camera's gonna be hot at all times, um, that shorts out. So I'm just gonna remove it. Remove the whole thing, and that should be fine. You don't need that anymore. Okay. This uh, negative wire down here, um, below that board, goes to the negative terminal of the battery. So I'm going to remove that when I bring out the soldering iron. And then up here, we've got... A blue, a black, and a pink. Okay, so you take your blue and your pink and you move them over to the side here like so. And you're going to take your black wire and then that's what we're going to join over here with the negative uh, battery terminal. Okay, and then your pink and your blue, you could just dress them down next to the, to the motor. So we have a green and a blue coming out of the motor. We're going to remove those, but I'm going to leave them on there right now just for reference. And then we have this other uh, darker pink that um, 
is your positive from your battery compartment. Okay. These two orange down here, you don't need. Um, so the way this is going to work is I already told you you're going to connect these two blacks together or just remove this little one and then wire the other one. However you do your wiring, that's fine. Um, and then you're going to want to connect the blue wire to the green. You're going to remove this green up here and then that's where the blue would be connected to. And I usually join the two pinks and then connect them over here to where the blue wire is on the motor. So I've now uh, soldered everything that needed to be put in place. So let me show you what I did. Okay, so I ran the black wire through the bottom of that panel and then uh, yeah, soldered it, soldered it there and I put some uh, black gaffer tape to keep that wire from getting into the, uh, the gears there. Then the blue and the pink, they come around the back and I attach that blue to the top and the pink to the bottom and then what I do is I leave enough wire so that I can twist it around that's where the battery uh, pink wire comes out from so I could reuse some of these um, channels I guess um, to hold the wire holders to keep everything out of the way and then what you have now is that when you hold the power button And that's something that you got to practice once you start using this um, with your light sealed camera. It's about five seconds and you got to remember to let go because it keeps going. So it's a good idea, especially now that you have both rollers exposed, to just give them a wipe down with uh, alcohol. Um, you could remove this top part to help you out, but it's kind of weak and it breaks sometimes, so I don't recommend it. You got enough visibility of the rollers here to work with it. Um, don't forget to wipe down any glass areas so that when you put it back together you don't have smudges on there. Reassembly time. Uh, before we start that I have added some things um, and I've done some things off camera that I'm going to point out to you now. So first uh, the things that I'm adding um, 90 millimeter f3.5 that I'm going to use with this setup to test it um, this is the lens that I carry the most with the, the Instax wide setup uh, because it's the smallest and it's the cheapest and to be honest there is not much if any noticeable difference between this and the venerable 100mm f2.8. I leave that one on my universal press so I can shoot pack film with it because then you do see that beautiful quality of that lens. Uh, but for this I don't want to lug that around so I'm going to add that. Um, and therefore I need uh, this adapter that I make out of a uh, carbon filled nylon um, that will attach to the front of the wide 300. I also have a 600 SE version that I showed you at the beginning of the video that in a camera that I've already made for another customer. Um, but right now I'm working on a Mamiya Universal Press version. Okay, um, then the other thing that I've done uh, is I've added half inch by half inch window weather stripping foam that we're going to use to place over here in this area to light seal um, the body from any light that may come in through the viewfinder because once we remove the internal cone um, lights gonna get through there and to do that there are some things that you need to do on here um, you can kinda see the areas where there were there were plastic posts there that you have to shave off on this side so you have a nice flush mounting surface. It doesn't need to be perfect as long as you got enough of a flat area and then here there was one as well that I cut off and lastly I also blocked out um, the flash window with black gaffer tape. About two to three layers should do Mine wasn't double-sided, so I have to I had to kind of add one facing this way so it looks nicer. 
uh, when looking through there it's nice and dark instead of uh, distracting white window but you might like that look it's up to you you can play around with it and this is ready to put together uh, the only thing that will be remaining after this is just light sealing this uh, this mount um, because light will get in through you see these tabs we're gonna glue it in there but there's still enough light that can get through um, but lining the whole thing with gaffer tape on the inside or flocking tape whatever you like or spray painting it black um, or using epoxy or using hot glue gun black hot glue gun those are all different things that I've done that have yielded successful results as I've come along now I just use gaffer tape because it's easier it's cleaner um, I don't need to deal with it as much as everything else let's get to it so I already have the back panel with the buttons already put in there let's move this over to the side we have this piece that needs to go back onto the processing unit um, there's a channel in it that will help guide you and then it just clips on both sides there so just pop it in alright that's good this piece tends to move around it's flimsy but okay let's rest it back in here okay so far so good when you press here that you should hear that clamp that pop sound I don't know if you heard it so now the back is on there um, I'm lazy so I'm not removing the batteries I'm just gonna leave them in there for now let's install our foam So you want to press it up in here enough so that um, no light can get through there and then just finish putting down the rest of it. Okay. That should be good enough. All right, now let's put the top part back on. I think, yep. This part is gonna be a little bit more difficult than the first time around because that foam is now preventing it from closing securely all the way. So, adding the silver piece back on here helps. So let's do the bottom one first. I'm holding it here to prevent it from popping open and that helps a little bit. All right. We'll put that one in there. That looks good for now. Let's do the bottom. Let's do the long ones first. Remember the battery ones are flat, um, you should have a lot of extra ones by now anyway because we're not going to reuse the internal ones, there was a few internal flathead, um, flat top, sorry, not a rounded top like the others. And then we can install that back in there. Our last two screws. All right. 
right, just check. Ta-da. And this goes right in. There's some there's some uh, slots there that where it goes right in, and it should go in nicely. But now, and you twist it, and then it locks in place. Okay, and you still want to glue it, but if you have a 127 millimeter or a 102.8 or any of the other lenses that have um, the backing on it, uh, there's a plate in the back, then you want to aim that first. Um, in there, there's the plate that attaches to the back. So this plate, you want to align it in there um, once you have it secured to the mount so that you can make sure that it aligns properly in the back. Because if not, you might get some of the, if it's tilted, you might get some clipping of your edges. And that is about all that is left to do. Install your lens of choice. So final note, as I mentioned uh, during the reassembly, um, it is not fully ready to go yet. You do have to um, fully secure the mount in place. Um, glue it once you feel that it's aligned properly um, to your lenses. Um, and then you're going to want to light seal the inside. Um, I use Loctite Super Glue, the Ultra Gel. It does a great job of holding it together. Um, it is what most people use to bond 3D printed plastics to other plastics. Um, so that's what I use to keep it in place. Um, first I'll squirt some and all the attach points. There's three of them. One, two, three. And then quickly align it because that stuff dries pretty quick or at least it will hold whatever you're bonding pretty quick. Um, and then I'll add just a little bit on the inside wherever I could see that it meets the adapter if you want. Um, you could use epoxy if that's better. If you have a better experience with that um, and after that you want to line the inside uh, with black gaffer tape it works the best so it'll look like this one if you could see in there I got plenty of tape in there. There shouldn't be any light that makes it through there. Um, and it's the inside, so it doesn't have to be nice and clean. Knock yourself out. I'm no longer doing the conversion these actually are my last two and that's why I decided to make this video is to show you all how to put these together um, and I'm just gonna go and continue selling the mounts um, but if you don't want to buy the mounts from me that's cool you can um, trim the whole lip off and then sand the inside like crazy and then shove in um, a macro mount like this here, my very first ever prototype, when I wanted to shoot with these lenses on this camera. So I took a, what is that, number two and a number three. Um, I trimmed it off at the threads, the number three, otherwise it's too long, it'll cause some uh, blockage of the corners. 
And then I epoxied it in place with my craptacular job here, but this is what got me by for the longest before I started 3D printing my own mounts. And it's what you could do if you want to do the complete DIY route. And you'll need uh, ground glass attached to the inside of a frame to confirm infinity focus with this one. But it's about 62 millimeters from from there to the film plane. So use that as your guide. Hope that helps.